Hey, they're out there in watch and pocket watch land. I picked up this uh, vintage pocket watch online. Uh, it cost me, I think, $45 Canadian. Um, it has a bunch of problems. Uh, I don't think it's a, uh, I don't think it's a very expensive pocket watch. Uh, it's kind of crappy that way. It's old. It's a key wound watch. This is either the two holes that access the uh, setting and the key wound. And there's the lid for the lens. So these hinges seem to be working pretty good. Um, the glass was cracked. So I've got the cracked glass sitting there like that, which needs to be replaced. The uh, face of it is okay, I think. It's got, got some marks and cracks in it, but it's not terribly bad, I guess. For an old watch, it has no markings on it, which is kind of odd. Maybe way in the back in the day, they had no markings on on pocket watches or the really cheap ones. They didn't mark because they were manufactured. And I heard that they made movements kind of in Switzerland, and then they in England they made cases, or in Canada they made cases, and they merged them up with movements somewhere else. And the watch industry is kind of weird. There's tons of box, uh, books written on the watch industry. So, so the point of this video here is to think outside the box so this movement here I just want to get this movement ticking again which would be really nice right if I look at the balance it's got movement in it which is kind of neat which means I don't have to make another balance staff for it so and I think it's got kind of a weird escapement in there I don't think it's a normal escapement I'd have to have a look at it and see but it is kind of odd um, it is a key wound pocket watch which means you put the key right in there and you turn it one thing I noticed about it is that the uh, first of all the mainspring inside there is kind of pooped out it's, it's not working I'm gonna grab some keys I bought a, I brought I bought a bunch of these keys on the internet and let me have a look at these there every key ever wanted wanted for a key wound pocket watch and I think this is like a 9 or a 10, size 9 or a 10, the key on this. So the keys, the size of the key is marked on here. This is a 7, so this is probably won't work. Oh, actually it does. So, yeah, this is a 7, so maybe it's not a 9. I think it's probably 7. Let me see now. That looks like it's turning. So that's kind of wrong. And... This is a 10, which is smaller. So, and this doesn't fit over the top. You can turn it and then it feels like the hat ain't going over the head. So that is a 10. So if I look for a 9, probably a 9, um, I'll be better off. So I got a bunch of them here. That's a 2, 7, 8, 9. Where's 9? There's a 9 there. See if a nine fits over the top here. Yeah, so the nine tends to nine seems like it's riding in there. Nice. Yeah. If I turn this, am I getting a grip here? I'm getting a little bit of a grip, right? Not a lot, but a little. So, what I did here was I have a. I'm turning this some more. Oh, there we go. See, that just snapped, which means there's something wrong inside of the mainspring itself. So I have to take the mainspring out on this thing because it ain't working. I got a little bit of tension there, and I don't have the escapement turning at all on this. So I tried to put a little bit of, a ten little bit of tension on this, but just try that again. And what I did was I made this little... I'll show this to you in a second, but yeah, that's slipping. That is not working. Let me just put my thumb in here and see if I can grab this like that and see if that stays where it's supposed to be. No, it doesn't. Anyway, what I did was I've got this piece of mainspring. If you look really closely, I took this piece of mainspring and I bent it in the shape. And there it is there. And <clears throat> this piece, I'm going to move this out of the way here so I can see this a bit better. Um, this piece of mainspring, put this watch in a holder, 
of some sort. So how this works is there was at one time this uh, I'm sure you call it Paul or spring. It's a spring really. It goes along the uh, the edge here. I'm going to zoom in a bit and see if I can zoom in. There we go. If you look closely, you'll see that this goes along along the edge here, and then the metal is broken here. But it, it would go all along the edge here, and then it would feed into the slot. And there's a gear in this slot, kind of a ratchet gear in the slot. And so when I turn the mainspring here, uh, the arbor here, it click, 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 click on this slot right here. And and it prevents it from going back. So it's like the click spring for a, another different type of pocket watch. So it's a, an elaborate click spring. So what I thought I'd do is make another one of these but in the, in the meantime I just took a piece of mainspring and just jammed it in between here put an angle on it to tighten it and I thought that would work um, I bend the end by taking uh, the, the benzomatic lighter hang on let me just zoom out here and show this to you I think I showed you this before but I took this puppy dog here which is kind of pretty there it is there that thing there is like super duper good for for heating up mainspring so I heat that up to to uh, red for a few minutes and it uh, it tempers it tempers it or anneals it I'll have to look at look that up but anyway softens the metal so I'm able to bend it without snapping and then it cools it off and if I cool it off slowly I believe slowly it still has some bend in it if I if I dunk it into oil or cool it off really fast then it makes it more brittle and I remember I made a video a while back on making a screwdriver because I made a screwdriver just to see how the heck to make a screwdriver and <clears throat> it was a pretty neat exercise uh, I've never made anything like that before and I had to read a lot of books on tempering which is uh... so if you have a bad temper that's a you, know, you pause whenever you tell a joke you have to pause for a few seconds and then see if anybody laughs anyway so what I'm gonna do is take this apart I want to look at I'm gonna look at this thing here this jobby do here and then see if there's any way I can make one of these now somebody told me in order to make them apart to get to get, get the right steel and the right uh, the width, width of steel and everything else so I went on eBay and I bought this deluxe deluxe feeler gauge probably made in China I suspect um, made in China I think everything in the world is made in China anyway I don't know why people fight with the Chinese because if they stop making stuff we're screwed um, anyway made in China and there's a bunch of thicknesses of this gauge so I figured if I take this 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 little spring off and I match this metal on the spring with the metal on the gauge here so I get the right thickness of the gauge and then I'm able to grind this piece down to shape it into what this looks like drill a hole in it screw it in and now, now I've got myself a uh, something to fit into the slot then uh, that'll be pretty cool so so I'm gonna try that after uh, the first thing I'm gonna do though is strip this down and look at the mainspring uh, I can make this thing anytime because I'll have this off which I want to have it off uh, the bridge and then I'll be able to fashion this part and the width of the thing here needs to be needs to rise has to be free from the uh, mainspring barrel so then the barrel turns I'll just move the barrel a bit that barrel turns a bit I don't have any issues as well I can test this um, this watch by turning the barrel and seeing whether I get action on the uh, on the uh, on the watch itself or the other way to do it is to take a toothpick or a stick a piece of wood here and and simply I should tighten this in really so I don't have to so it doesn't move around and make sure when you tighten it in you don't squeeze anything you didn't want squeezed and so I think I gotta remember which way I have to push here if I push this gear can I get this thing to move let me just get it moving and then push the gear and see if I can keep it moving there we go so if you look at that I have pushed the gear and the uh, escapement works on it the balance works on it so all I need to do is get power 
from this barrel to this part of the watch and I've got myself um, I got myself a working pocket watch it's funny when you press this way right you get you can get it going and so if it's rotating this way that means this is rotating this way which means if I press on the barrel here I should be able to get some action which I do there you go that's another way of testing to see if the pocket watch is actually going to work and uh, if you know you're not getting power from the mainspring to the uh, to the uh, balance or through the escapement and then to the balance then there's a problem right so so the first thing I want to do is just take some of the stuff apart um, and uh, unscrew everything so I'm going to take the balance off first uh, just to, for safety reasons I should put on my uh, my zoom in glasses here so I can see what the heck I'm doing I often do work no oh, I touched the camera with my head great oh, new problem head e and camera equals problem there we go and you got to put some pressure on these old watches sometimes to make sure that the uh, make sure you don't have any issues so hey, there's the um, screw for this and I'll just move this around here I had to get my uh, screwdriver in here and just kind of wedge it in and rock back and forth I don't think oh there is a groove so there's a little groove on the side here that you can uh, put the screwdriver in and you just twist it and that'll release it from the uh, from the uh, pins the dart pins that go in there or whatever you want to call them I think uh, I work in the aerospace industry and and when you put sensors on sensors on aircraft you often get uh, you often have to align them up with the aircraft and to align them you have the same kind of pins so that ain't going to come out easy so I think I'm going to I don't want to stress I don't want to stretch this mainspring I don't want the other hairspring here so that could become a total other issue so and these screws are old they're I think they're blued too but they're old this one here looks like it's got some stuff stuck in it yeah there's like metal leftover screwdriver stuck in that one and that was from somebody trying to take these fingers off <laughs> you just get a bigger screwdriver here because I think that one there is going to break I want to put a new blade in there that'll peeve me off and I'm going to press down hard and then turn there we go got it the pain dans la batetsky. That's my French. And I don't think I have it all the way out, but just stand by to stand by, right? That should be out. There we go. <clears throat> and then I gotta group my screws. Let me see if this finger comes out on its own. It does, look at that. So these are individual fingers here, which is pretty amazing. Look at that. So that's some quality craftsmanship here. So I'll group the uh, group the parts, as they say, because I doesn't. And I'm gonna take. A, I think I'll take a photo of this too, just so when I put it back together, I don't go, "What the hell? How the heck does this go go together?" Because then I will be. I can always just show the video backwards. That's another thing you can do as well. And uh, again, I work in the aerospace industry, and sometimes people take. I keep hitting my head on this camera. I'm going to have to figure out what to do to move that camera the other way. Because uh, every time I hit my head, it moves away. So I'm just going to get rid of, get some of this stuff out of the way. And uh, just to uh, make sure I can get it. There's another one that's a separate finger as well. And often in pocket watches, these fingers are, there's it's got little studs in the bottom there which are to align it properly and I just want to get this one maybe out of the way um, this one there's only one screw for this on top here so that's just protecting the the key and this thing here just sets the time you turn that and it sets it turns the main wheel and then just sets the time on the watch so I should be able to lift this right out 
Um, but first thing I'll do is see if I can remove the uh, this fancy dancy little thing on the top. Just unscrew that like that, like so. And I don't want to lose any screws. I hate losing screws because then you're in the screw hunt. There, one just went bing. This little circle here is typically where I put small parts. So if you're doing watch work and you don't want to lose a spring or you don't want to lose any parts, it, you get a mat. I think these are dollar store mats. They're kind of rubbery. I'm not sure what material they're made of, but there's some kind of a synthetic something or other. They're enough of a pad that, that parts don't fly off them. And as well, I draw a little tiny uh, circle there. I put a little aiming dart in it, I guess, but I draw a little circle. And this ensures that I, the smaller parts, uh, I can go in there. Because sometimes even if you put them on the mat, you can't find them. So, and I don't like that. So, there's probably a cannon pinion on the other side I have to take off as well. So let me have a look here before I make a big mistake here. I'm wondering if I can get this out now. Do you think? Do you think? Safely remove the uh, the balance from here without causing disaster. This is a very light spring. There we go. So that's the balance. I'm gonna put this in my hand like this. And then turn it over like that in my hand and then put the balance right here just stay there and don't go anywhere all right you know what you mean now this is the tricky part with these old watches now I haven't done a lot of these vintage ones here but this I think it's two parts I think the uh, there's a cannon pinion on one side and I've had to I've had to tap the end of the cannon pinion at times to get this through. So I'm just having a look at what this thing looks like here really quickly. Because it's, um, if I zoom in on that again and have a look at that left and right. So there's, let me see, up there and then in there. There it is there. So that's the movement there and so the cannon pinions on the other side the other weird thing about this watch is that there is nothing here and that's below the barrel the mainspring barrel the mainspring is right in there and the barrel turns like that but it looks like there should have been a clip or some gears or some freaking thing in there I'm not sure what that is I'd have to ask around to find that out um, I normally use my cannon pinion remover tool I'm going to grab that and see if if I actually will work, because there's really nothing to do. This is the uh, Jaws of Life. This is the Canon Pinion Removal Tool. And this tool just grabs onto the Canon Pinion and pulls outward. Now, the problem with this tool is that sometimes it won't grip the Canon Pinion, and I sometimes have to use um, a screwdriver to, uh, to get enough force to grip it. So... If I do that and then pull up, well, look at that. It worked. So I just spit that thing out. And there's the cannon pinion. Done. That worked really well, actually. So I put that in the center because that's one of these little parts I don't want to lose. And then the cannon pinion sticking out there. And that's where the uh, cannon pinion, then the hour wheel goes over there, the minute wheel's over here. And yeah, dogs, your uncle, uh, cats and dogs living together. Uh, problems of biblical proportion. That was a Bill Murray line from Ghostbusters, I think. So I'm just going to uh, lift the wheel and everything right out and see if I can take this apart differently. Again, this is, I uh, don't work on a lot of these old Swiss vintage whatever watches. I'm afraid of them normally. So I've got quite a few of them running. I have like a, three Henry Peck watches that I worked on over the uh, Last couple of years, I think I made a video on one of the Henry Peck watches because uh, they're really old. They're like 1886. That's pretty old. Um, and uh, watches, they're very well made back then, with pocket watches. And the Henry Peck ones are key wound. Um, they're very good. See, the whole thing comes out as one unit. 
So I'll I'll remove this this uh, gear with this winding top winding stem from it later. So once I figure out how to do that. So for now I'll leave it over here because really I just wanted to take this apart so I could work with the barrel. And I'll take these gears up uh, out for cleaning for later. And where will I put the gears? Let me move this aside. I'll put the gears right there. I don't know if this one will come out. I think I'll probably have to remove the uh, remove the escapement first. And seems to be all in good condition. As you saw, the thing was running. So if it that all the screws are loose here, I know what's going on. But I guess a couple hundred years of of uh, not moving, um, it's going to get loose. And there's a little groove here as well that, to lift this out, which is kind of cool. It's one might say it's groovy. See, that's a joke. Ha ha ha. It's a Sunday right now, and it's Sunday. It's 12:23 right now, and we don't have any great plans for the day. My wife and I um, probably go visit the kids. Um, I got a couple of grandchildren. I don't know. You wouldn't think I was that old, but I am. And I go visit the kids and the grandchildren and just see what the poop is. Now, I'm going to remove the cap on this too, the protective cap on this, nice and carefully. And these are the little miniature screws here that come in this thing here. And I'm putting them inside the infamous safety circle. The circle of life. The circle of life. There, that was my uh, singing. So, my wife said I should make some guitar videos again because I used to make a lot of music videos playing Santana songs like Samba Petit and other things because I play guitar. Um, but I haven't made a guitar video in a long time. There's so many people out there with videos on how to play guitar and they're, and they're a hell of a lot better than I am. So, uh, you know, when you're watching a video on somebody there, I'm just removing these little screws here. And you 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 look on YouTube and you see some kid who's like 13 years old who plays like Joe Satriani. You're like, uh, go to, go upstairs, take my guitars, turn them into firewood. Um, see that just fits like that. And there's a little groove right here. That's um, where the metal goes in. And if you look on the top, again, see if I can use Mr. Zoom here and. If you look on the very top, you can see, I wonder where center is, it's right there. You can see the little ratchet wheel here. So this little wheel, when I, and this little bar here, this goes to the end, it broke off. It would go down and it would slip in here. And if you look at the gears here, the gears, do I need my little paper? I think I need a little paper. I'm going to draw a drawing. No, you're going to go, oh my God, he's going to draw another drawing. But when you when you draw drawings, it's good because it helps explain crap, right? Can I use the word crap on a YouTube video? Is that okay? Let me know. Um, but so this this piece here, it goes like so. It's sort of fat here because there's a screw going through it, and then it then it's squared here, and then it goes all the way to the end. And then it tucked in at an angle. So if I look at if I look at this here, um, this piece of metal had to actually jam itself into these teeth. And the teeth, the teeth look like they are going. There's the gear. Let's say this is the uh, the center of the gear, and the teeth are at a sawtooth angle. So they're going kind of at an angle like this. I'm not sure if I'm drawing that angle right, but kind of a sawtooth, right? So so when this thing turns uh, this way, when I wind it, this piece of metal is in here and it will, I'm turning it this way, like that. So it's going around like that. And this piece of metal will, this will allow it to slide so it slides and it rides on the sawtooth and then it clicks into place again. And when this tries to go back, 
this piece of metal is jammed right in to one of these saw teeth like this preventing it from going back so this and there's a screw here on this actually there's a screw here on it like that the screw head and then there's a stud that's part of the metal that goes in here and this thing is thick so this is what I want to make out of those feeler gauges is this piece of metal here which is this here I'm going to take it off in a second and show you what it looks like so that is my drawing so I need to fashion this metal and then somehow bend it at this at the right angle so I should probably leave this intact to, to for the measurements right so I can get the right measurements in here um, but I do want to take out the mainspring to see if the mainspring is broken I'd like to see what the scoop is with the mainspring so perhaps I think this thing probably just rides up and and then and I can make the angle here and then file it later it's like just file it down until it fits perfect because it looks like it's only a couple of millimeters before it hits the teeth and then when the teeth ride up on this thing this the actual uh, strength of this spring here has got to be right I can't have it too strong because it might ruin the teeth and I can't have it too weak um, because it won't stay in place it won't grab properly so it's going to be a tricky little part to make but uh, I'm going to try to make it I might try to make it and show it to you on video who knows how brave can I be how brave can I be so I'm going to unscrew this so I'm just unscrewing the, um, i just show you here. I put this on non-focus, like not automatic focus, because I got sick of the automatic focus taking it out of focus. So I left it like this, just pointing at this. I'm kind of awkwardly trying to remove the screw. So you just pull on this. Can I just, I don't want this thing to go flying. It's the last thing I want. Because if it goes flying, I, once again, I'm screwed. Screwed, I tell you. I'll be looking for parts on the floor. There we go. So, this is what the part looks like. So, now I'm going to put that, I think I should probably put this on automatic. There's a screw for it. And that gives me, I can reuse that screw there. Um, so, I'll put the screw. So, this part really right in my little diagram this part would be sideways like this I'm fumbling around here fumble fumble there it would be like that and then it would go this way and this way so I have to remake it so it has it's long enough to extend to here and then tuck in and then this can go tickety 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 so I'm gonna have a look at I really should try to make that part before I take this apart because if I let me tighten that up a little bit. If I take this apart and I haven't made the part yet, I won't get the distancing right. So I'm going to pause this for a few minutes and then go see what I can do with respect to making that part. Let me cut this. I'm going to do this in front of you, but I just poked myself in the finger with my little tool kit. But if I just cut this up, just remove this from the packaging. I'm just rem I'm just cutting this. We're getting this live, live. I did my video on oiling uh, two days ago or something, and people were saying they liked it, they appreciated it, and it was a video on how to do all oiling. This is brand new, so I'm going to ruin this. I hate to say it because really I don't need any feeler gauges. I'm not in the automotive industry, but but if I look at these feeler gauges and I look at the uh, 0.88 in millimeters, right? So I'll bet you any money, not any money, but I bet you some money, I can find the gauge, the the gauge that would be the right gauge that would match this, the end of this, right, right here, that little tiny piece of metal. So, and what I could do, if I was really brave, is I could get out my micrometer and actually measure that piece of metal. So I could measure it or eyeball it as long as it's got flexibility, right? And it's flexibility over the length of the metal. So it's not just flexibility over, it's not flexibility, it's over the length of the metal. So I'm going to pause for a second and get up my marker. So this is a digital micrometer. It's uh, made in China. So if I look at the end here, that's where you squeeze the part in. 
and then and the reading is right here and it's in millimeters set in millimeters and this side of the micrometer when it gets to the end you you turn it like this and then it clicks so you don't push it anymore and if you look at this I've adjusted this I, gotta, I did zoom down so I gotta make sure I'm down here but I adjusted this so it's hitting zero right on the money so the zero mark is is right on the money which is good so what I'll do, what I do, is I take this micrometer. I got too much stuff on here, and I think my camera is too far away, so or too close. It's in my way. So move this bench, the keys away, and stuff like that. Clear up some space. I think I'll move this little pad away too, unless I need to do some splaining, Lucy. You need to do some splaining, Lucy. That's uh, my. Carol, not, I was going to say Carol Burnett. That's not Carol Burnett. That's Lucille Ball. I was a kid when I watched Lucille Ball, so I'm not that old, okay? So stop thinking I'm old. So, you need to do some splitting, Lucy. So what you do is you take this and you, you tighten it up. You hold the end of it like this and you go like that. And then you hit the zero button, like that, and it zeroes everything out. Then when you back it off, like this you take the part and I want to look at the leaf on the end so I'm going to put that leaf in the gap like so and I got to use the other hand and then I'm going to squeeze in that leaf gap like that and the reading is point if I go eat eat tickety tick it's about point point three four millimeters at that point um, so it's 0.34 so good idea is to write that down on a pad or something so I'll just write here 0.34 millimeters that's the spring thickness and then the width of the spring is just so I might, might cut it the, the right width although I'm going to use it as a template the width is point, 0 0.94 is the width that's not as important I don't think because it's the thickness I'm really concerned with although the strength and width is part of the thickness I guess so so 0 0.94 is how wide the thing is 0.94 and then there's the main part of it and I was actually thinking if I keep this main part and I take my and I take the metal or the spring I cut and I lay it in there and I, dr I drill a hole in the spring itself um, and then the screw goes through the hole I could probably retain the whole thing the other thing I do is just use the piece of metal on its own and and just screw it down there but the problem I has, have is if it lifts up then I've got a little bit of an issue so I have to figure out how to shape this metal so it doesn't lift up it shouldn't lift up but you never know so so that's uh, the thickness of this thing so 0.94 was the width of the, th of the thing and the thickness of this metal is is stand by it's so exciting 1.215 1.21 1 and there's an angle there so it's awkward. I usually use it. One point. So there it is. So it's 1.19, 1.2. So I'll say 1.2. So if I look at this thing here, it's sideways. The leaf part here, that's this part here, is 0.34. And then there's the fat part, and that fat part is there, and that's point or 1.21. Not too concerned with that and then the width of this thing here if I flip it around it's going to be wide and the width of that thing there is 0.94 so but probably won't even need that anyway so that's the micrometer that's how you use a micrometer it's a great little tool this thing doesn't cost much but the digital being digital is so sweet you don't have to worry about it you can lock it too you can put it in place and lock the lock whatever you got there uh, and it works perfectly so you zeroize it, this is perfect, then you do what I just did to measure it. Turn it off, and because you don't use a micrometer a lot, um, 
you should always use the back of your screwdriver like this to loosen the this part here and it is recommended that you pop the battery out right and I think it comes out pretty easy like that dump the battery put the lid back on put the lid back on like so and let me see I'm already 35 minutes into this video and you guys are like holy Jesus shut up jeez jeez I like I say I like advertising for other people but Bun Special is one of the guys who's hilarious I just love watching his stuff and then I put the battery and the micrometer back in this really cool plastic case like so it's a big micrometer case and it fits in perfectly and there's a piece of paper and then I shove the battery in so it kind of looks like that and I shove the battery in there and close it down my work here is done and I put it back to where it belongs in my with my other watch tools everything is within throwing distance and so I have this the screw this which I might retain depending on how I fashion this this uh, spring right it's gonna be tough to do this because it's uh, let me just get a close-up of that spring here I'm not sure how well these digital close-ups work but there it is there so and I'll turn it sideways and there's the spring with the stud and that goes into the watch right here right so I really have to look at this so I said that the thickness of this thing was 0.34 and I've got measurements right here and <laughs> 0 0.35 what the heck so so millimeters yeah, this is 0 0.88 uh, this is 0 0.05 which is really thin like crazy thin 0 0.20 these are feeler gauges. Let me just zoom out a bit here so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, so these are feeler gauges and they've got the uh, millimeters here, I believe, in the inches on top. So I'm looking for 0.34. So they have a thick one on the top just to protect these feeler gauges. So 0.34 would be, would be, and this is like brass or something. I'm not sure why they got that one in there there but anyway and they're all oily 0 0.34 0 0.33 0 0.35 so somewhere between I'm gonna want it to say I'm gonna want it to say somewhere between a point of 33 and a point of 35 so this is the right thickness of metal that I need to use so I'll go let me think I should go 0.35 I don't want it to be too thin so there's there's my metal so all I got to do is remove this metal so again not sure how the hell I do that no I kind of it's got a screw on it right the feeler gauges have a screw on it I just end up taking this off I've never done this before so this is gonna be a friggin mess and then I remove these parts of the gauge let me just rotate this because I got to remove X amount of feeler gauges like that and then take this out 0.35 and then take these other feeler gauges out in and then put this back right nice and carefully like so and then put this screw back in it's not bad for five bucks you not only get the metal you want with these feeler gauges but it tells you how thick the metal is so it's perfect and these things seem like they're nice and springy so I can do some serious friggin manufacturing with this so what I want to do then is if I look at this feeler gauge first of all I want to clean it off so there's not so much grease on it right it's slipping away slipping away so just clean the gauge off so it's get rid of some of the grease on the gauge yeah and there we go 0.35 right there you can see that not sure if you can but I can 0.35 millimeters um, and then you take if you're gonna do watch repair and not just take a watch apart clean it and buy a part 
Um, then you got to do some machining and some stuff. And I'm not a machinist. I think I told you I'm an electrical engineer by degree and job when I was younger. Now I'm management, so I still have to understand what I'm managing. So I need to uh, make sure I'm not screwing that up. But if I look at this and I put put this in here, I say, well, I've got to cut this to a length, right? And that is kind of where it fits. I just Again, like if I would make excuses for not being able to do videos properly, but if um, if I'm talking while I'm doing it, then I'm screwing it up. So that's the metal there. So this has got to be extended beyond that. Now I think I think I actually want to figure out how to how to cut this and have it tucked inside of here, because if I can tuck this in. If I can tuck this in to this where this stud is, then I kind of don't have to worry about the holes and stuff. Um, but if I can't, then I have to drill a hole through here and then screw this into the plate. And I'm not sure, the worst case scenario is I put a bunch of washers on the screw to give it some distance and then screw that in like that and then see if that works. So it's one or the other. So I'm not sure which one I want to do, but let's just cut the metal first. And then uh, I could probably cut this metal with tin snips. It's really thin, but I do have a bandsaw that I can cut it with. But anyway, so let's stop talking. But what I want to make sure is that from here to here, I've got the right distance. So what I'm going to do is get another tool out. Staying on a second. So this is a vintage measuring tool. So I love vintage tools. They made them so well back then. So I cleaned it up a bit and oiled it, but all I do is I use this tool and I and I will set the distance here. And I'm gonna measure the distance from where this part broke to where I want it to be to bend the end of it. So so I think if I make it around that big and I bend it and then I'll be able to file the end to make sure it fits. So I'll make it around that big past past the broken part. And I'm not sure if I need to zoom in on that to show you, but I'll zoom in a bit and then move stuff over just a, tie, a tad. Again, this is another screw I don't want to lose. So I'm going to put this way over here. And, and so what I do is I just take this tool and I, I just turn this until it fits right and I'm thinking if I measure it from the edge here to right here then I'm going to be able to turn the corner like bend it and turn the corner and again I'm not sure whether I should snug this in or or into here um, I could take a piece I could take it and then snug it in and then put the screw in and see if it all fits right so let me try that I'll leave this aside here now now that I've done that so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to see if I can open this up a bit and then snug this piece of metal in like that. So I'm just going to stand it up like this and then I do have the screw so I'm going to put the screw in the hole. I know you can't see anything from the angle but too bad. So I'm going to put the screw in the hole like so. Take my screwdriver. I'll show you once I got it fit in there what it looks like. So just bear with me. Bear with me. What I want to see is if I tighten this, will it have enough grip to keep this metal in place? It's kind of weird. I'm tightening it here and You know what? I think it is working. All right, done. So what I did, oh yeah, great. Didn't work. What I did is I fed this in here, this feeler gauge in here at an angle. I'm going to zoom out again. I think things are going to fall apart. That's when you have to show people stuff again. 
things tend to fall apart. So let me zoom out here. So I take the feeler gauge, I stick it in underneath here, and I look at where the screw is here, and I've got enough grip on the teeth of that screw to basically grip this the metal of the feeler gauge. Um, and and still stay in place. So I'm going to slide the feeler gauge over here and then just unscrew this just a bit and see if I can get enough width on that grip here before it hits the screw. Let me see, is that grip? There we go. So there, like that, and I'm not sure if this will grip. Like I said, if it doesn't grip, I'll just put this feeler gauge in place. No, that's just turning. So that screw is not getting enough grip on there. So I'd have to get a longer screw to put that in there. Or, or at the end of the day, all I'm going to do is measure this feeler gauge. I'll reuse that screw and I'll put that, I'll just cut the feeler gauge so it fits in there, the metal, and then it screws into here. And I might see if I can put a post or something in here, like rivet it in so it stays in place. But first I want to get the screw in place. If I get it in with the screw and it works, then it's, then I got myself game. I'm game. So that's that. So I'm going to, I'm going to fashion the metal. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this piece. And I've already measured the uh, distance that I want the end spring to be so and I know there's probably machinists out there that are like what the hell is he doing so I know that I've got I've got to cut a piece that looks kind of like that right it looks like this I think this is magnetic <laughs> nice and I wanted to have extra distance on the end here like about a boot they say Canadians say a boot and we don't really say a boot so about, 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 about that much, right? So I measure it like that, which means I got to cut the piece of metal right here, right? So, and if I just take my screwdriver and make a scratch, that's probably good enough. So I got to cut the metal, the piece of metal right here, the feeler gauge. There's my scratch. like that and then and I'm going to take the marker because I'm going blind and this is the world's fattest marker by the way so I want to cut it right there and then from a width perspective I want this baby to be I want this baby to be about the same thickness that I cut that I my marker went but I want it to stop. I want it to stop right here on the end here. And once again, you can't see properly when you're doing it this way, but I can scratch this on the inside like that. And then I'm a shitty machinist, I'll tell you. I'm a better watchmaker. This thing is magnetic. This I got to put this this co compass or whatever the hell it's called through a demagnetizer because it's pissing me off it's starting to stick to the metal right so I need this to go to stop right a boot I have to say a boot right about here and then it's going to go right to the end right so my thickness of this metal and I'll check this when I file it down, but my thickness is probably about as thick as that dot. Right there. So that gives me an indication of a cut to here, and then I'll cut it all the way to the end probably. And then I have to cut it on the inside here. Now, it might be a smarter way, smarter thing to do, because if I flip this around the other way, right, I can keep this metal in place and then just trim away trim some of this on the other side while I'm holding the feeler gauge 
So that's probably going to work a lot better. Anyway, I'm going to put that on pause and see what I can do. All right, so you got to record all your mistakes as well as your good stuff. Um, so that's what I think I should be doing anyway. So what I have here is a vise. Um, and I want to see if I can open this thing up a bit. There's my part. So I want to trim metal away off the top of this. So basically I'm taking the top of this part here um, and then trimming it down. I've got some markings here. So I got where the end needs to be. I got where the hole needs to be. I've got where the leaf where I got to take metal off of this part here. And then I got to cut it away. Um, cut it down to here and then across. So all very tricky. But what I want to do is first is be able to grab this metal here. So as I as I file away on it, um, it's like in there really good. There we go. So I've got it kind of set up like this. So I can file away on the edges here and and there won't be any issues. So I'm gonna file this file that down. Um, I brought a big ass file in here. I'm not sure whether this is just it's like a wood file or something. Whether this will actually take metal off. I'm not completely sure. Um, but if I look at if I look at my part, so let me just angle the camera here a bit. So it's, it's right in my face right now. So that's not gonna work at all. But I have my part here and what I'm trying to do here, trying to do, don't try anything. There what is it Yoda said? There is no try. Do or do not. That's my Yoda. Wanna hear that again? Probably not. Anyway, so that's this is basically where the hole is here. Ah, uh, freaking gonna swear any second now. Okay, there we go. So there's, right there is where the hole is. Um, there's where the end of the part is, and then, and this part needs to extend all the way to the end, and then I'll trim the edge, the edges off. But I've got to take, got to take this much, this much off the end. So I'm going to try to eyeball that that amount. Um, as I file it down. I know that this little tiny file here does remove the metal nicely. Um, I could use a Dremel tool, but I'm going to see if I can, whether this this file here actually removes the metal too. Let me have a look here. And I think the quick answer is yes, it does. So I think that'll get me down to the uh, right distance. So I'll just file away at that, and then I'll just use my finer files. For <clears throat> so I'm filing the metal down here. Um, seems to be working fairly well. I just file it down flat like this, and I got to get the right distance. If I take too much off, I'm not too worried because I can just file it some more, and. What I do here is I, I look at this part here. I just want to make sure that I get the right distance here between. Um, let me see if I can do this. Basically, I want this distance from here to here to be the same as here to here. So, and this ends up being my spring right there. So, on camera, make your mistakes while people are watching. So. Just eyeball the distance here. I don't need to be super accurate because I can always adjust it later. So that's pretty friggin' good. Um, I want to make sure too. Let me just measure this here. I'm going to use my ancient tool here to measure this distance here. So I've already measured it from the edge to the end, which gave me the go to the end here. So I can now use this ancient tool to measure, and it's ancient, let me tell you, measure that gap like so, that is the gap there, and then I'm going to look at where I am here, and I think 
I can take off a little bit more because I've got yeah I can take off just a bit more like that and just try to keep my file flat so I'm removing enough from the edge but again like I said I can adjust that after pretty good there. And I'll eyeball it to make sure it's flat and it goes up just a bit so I gotta take more material off the end here. I mean if you're if you're really a machinist you can probably just friggin put it into a saw of some sort and then cut it it away so there we go Is that flat enough flat enough for government work okay I'm gonna pause this for all right now resorting to horsepower probably shouldn't be doing this upstairs I should be doing this in my workbench but I'm gonna cut this friggin metal with this thing here so far so I'm not sure if when I do this it's actually tempering the metal I'm going to have to figure that one out. But this is like part number one. I may have to have cut part number two after. Not sure. Anyway, I'm going to reset. Alright, that was actually really easy with a Dremel tool. I just cut that thing right off like no problem at all. So I think I got a bunch of crap on this cloth. And I got my uh, this thing here is still full of metal. So I'm not sure about that. But if I look at this part here. I'm already dirtying up my mat here. When I look at this part here, it's fairly close. I just need to trim down the metal on this here so that it's a little bit springier. So that's not too bad. Um, I was thinking about the stud on the end here. And what I could do is just make a hook on the end of this metal to go into the hole so it doesn't move. So, so basically, I've got this part here like that and I think I can squeeze that in my vise and then file that down some more or I'll use my uh, Dremel tool again and just shave the edge off of it put a barrel in there and just shave it down so I'm not sure which will be easier but uh, I know the Dremel tool will take metal off really fast so I'm a little worried about that but I need to crunch her down and try it anyway back at it all right here's the part here I got a little tiny wedge of metal sticking out from the edge here and let's see if you can see that I need to perfect my camera moving zoom capabilities here so there it is there um, go back forth this way that way just move the thing out of the way there we go so that's it there um, I think I gotta zoom in on this just hang on all right so there's the piece of metal sticking out I put it on auto zoom here there's a piece of metal sticking out so I'm gonna file this down I think I'll use a file to file this down I think if I use a Dremel tool I'll take too much off too fast so let me just work at that to get that center I'll be back they're just working the metal off the top of this like I showed you earlier and that'll file that down to uh, down to a nice little slice for that spring doesn't matter what you do, you're going to have to put elbow grease in there at some point in time. So that's the piece of metal, that's the end of the spring right here, um, right there. And then I've got this file down and I'm going to have to look in on it in a second so I don't take too much away here. So what I'll do is loosen this up, <coughs> wrong way, <coughs> like that, and then have a look. And that's what it looks like now. So I think I could probably take a bit more off of that. Um, and I think I gotta take a bit off the edge here. So not sure why that is bent, but it seems to be. And then it's gotta match the width of this. So I still have to take quite a bit off just to make to do that. So anyway, I'll be back. I'll be Alright, starting I found a nicer file here. 
but it's starting to look more like the part. So if I look at this again and I look at the width there, that's uh, pretty darn good. You just roll that over. So that is what the part looks like now. And that is the part I'm making. And it's about like that. So if I put that in place, I can figure out where to drill that hole here. I may want to move the part over a bit. I'm not too concerned about the end. I just I think I may just bend a metal and bend a piece of metal in there to make a tap. And so it tucks in. So which means I gotta file both sides down on there and then make the tab. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that, but so far so good. That's pretty small part here. So again I gotta make sure I've got the part to the end there so I can put that against the watch and see where that fits. So I think I also have to narrow this a bit. Like uh, if I line it up there um, I probably could take a little bit of material off the top right there. So I think I'm going to do that um, by just clamping it in right here. Uh, of course it dropped right through the vise. Right? Story of my life but you just have to clamp it in clamp it it's like jet clamp it so clamp it down and then take a little tiny bit off the top so I can clamp that in like this probably don't need to show you this but give it a little bit of snugness and push that in a bit I just have to release it just a tad there we go and then push that in like that and then tighten it down and I zoom out here and then what I do is I take this file here and I really got to get in close here because I just want to take a little bit off the top and then square the shoulder just a tad but I don't want to take too much off that might be enough right there Yeah, that might be enough right there. And then if I look at it again, there it is. Let me see if that's, if I took enough off the top there. Um, it's not too bad. And then what I want to do then is take this part, let me just move this out of the way, and messy up my thing again because I should be doing this downstairs where I got my, my machine shop. So there it is there. Hopefully that's focused. And if I look at where that fits, you zoom in again. It fits right here. Like that. Um, I think you can pretty much see that probably. Turn that sideways. There's there it is there. So that's not too bad at all. So if I look at that, tuck that in like this. Um, it's almost flat. I think I have to take a bit more off the bottom part. Just file a bit more off, and then it would fit in right there. And then I have to make my bend pretty much right here make my bend right here to come in right I don't want to make it too much too drastic a bend because uh, it has to actually be able to flop out so if I make it here in the middle it'll go in at an angle and then be able to when I turn that it'll jump out so I'll take a mark I'll make a mark on the top and that's where my bend is going to be it's right I think that'll work anyway Again, if it doesn't work, I just have to start all over again. So I still have to take a little tiny bit of material off the bottom of this so this goes down a bit so it's flush. Because um, I want it to be square and I want when it's when it's sitting like this that it's square and I, and this is raised up from the uh, from the mainspring. So I got to do a little bit more 
taking of material off of this thing, right? And there it is there. So, so again, here's the part. And what I do is sticking up just a bit here. And I just want to rub the file here and take a bit off take a bit off the top right here and that's where the leaf spring is here so I just want to take a bit of an angle now I don't want it to be too low so I just got to play with this until I get just a bit off so that's what I'm going to do so I think that's pretty much perfect and when I put some pressure on this new part right a little bit of pressure on the part like that and I can still move the barrel I, it looks like it's touching just a bit there, so I can trim that a bit. Um, if I trim the back of this part, if I put it back in the vise and I remove a little bit of metal from here, then this will stand up a bit. So I could do that, or I can just bend it up a bit once I get it in place. So I think that's pretty much done. And I think maybe I just have to drill a small... A small hole in the in here and what I think I'll do to do that is I will drill it in my watchmakers lathe and I'll hold this with a uh, a plate a three jaw plate to drill that hole because I don't want to drill that hole and screw that up so I want to use my I want to use a um, the uh, what's it called there oh my god to call it holding tailstock to drill that hole so I don't have a problem there at all so I think so that's how you make the part I still have to bend this part here and then scrape a bit more let me see if I can do that right now. so I'm holding this part in the uh, the jaws of life I call this the jaws of life anyway it's a pretty handy tool and I can hold that part in here and then take a little bit of material off the edge right here to flatten it a bit more now holding the part in the jaws like this I can use my torch and heat the end of it and then bend the metal so I've decided not to actually heat the metal because I think it's already kind of soft and I'm just going to try to I've put the part in here at an angle and I'm not sure if you can see that but the parts right there right there and I'm going to tap that to try to bend it if I break it I'll start all over but I think I'll still publish the video because it still shows you how to do it so tap this down like this and pray it doesn't friggin break all right looks like it worked so that steel that's part of the um, there it is that's the angle there I think I could probably get a bit more of an angle on that so that is pretty friggin good so and zooming in so I could I don't have to refocus here but I'm just gonna zoom in and then try to find the friggin camera there it is there so that's the angle and I think I need to put it at a bit more of an angle when I put it in the watch movement wherever that is I keep moving stuff around and now I can't find it hey, there's the watch movement so back forth up down there we go so that's where my focus is so now if I put that in there if I look at that the way that sits in there oh my god I think I bent it the wrong way oh my god you idiot I bent it the wrong way so am I, can I recover from this that's the question oh man when you bend something one way and you try to bend it the other way it won't work so I will try but I doubt if it'll work I will I doubt if I can bend it back and forth again that is not good now it's time to get out the anvil and then if I can't bend it back and forth I did show you every friggin thing to do except the last part was basically measured three times cut once why the hell did I bend that the wrong way anyway um, if I bend it back slowly, right, like that, so and then flatten it out, 
It's a great metal bending here. The question is, can I bend it the other way now? Could have been a blacksmith here. Just gonna hold it on the edge here like this and then pound away and see what happens. I should actually put it back in the vise and then pound it the other way on the vise. So I will stop this for a second. Alright, so I've bent the end now. Um, I actually broke the end off, so I shortened it just a bit and I moved, moved the base over just a bit, so I still had leftover parts. I could make a brand new part, but and then I bent a greater than 90 degree angle on the end here, and now I've got to make sure that the very end of this metal is at the right angle, so when the ratchet slides through, it it sweeps it. Right now it's bent this way and we got to make it bend this way. So it's this way and I got to make it bend this way. So I've got some diamond, some very fine, uh, I got the 400 grit diamond here. So I'm going to see if that can do the job. If I just do that, like that, and then have a look at it and see if I got the right angle here. That's a lot better. And just a bit more here. Do it in front of the camera, maybe. No, oh, yeah, that's nice. So I think I, if I show you this, hopefully. Yeah, there's the end, so I'm going to see if I can do a close-up on this and show it to you, but I'm going to do some adjustments. Alright, so there's the angle right there that I got, and I got a really tight, tight angle on that. So, I'm going to move this camera back, and I can never figure out how to do this anyway. That's a really tight angle on that part, so it looks like that. So that's the very bottom of it. And you can see I put a little bevel going at an angle like this on it. So when I remove that part, just move this part out of the clamp here and show it to you. And there's, there's what I end up with with that part, which looks pretty friggin' good. So then I slide that into the... Uh, the watch there's that angle so it's a little greater than 90 degrees so when I slide that into the watch um, let's see if I can do this without screwing it up uh, I should be able to just slide it in place like so and then bend it so it can fit there we go and it looks like it fits I may have to remove a little bit of material from where the uh, from where the uh, thing is but look at this watch this watch this look at that that my friends is called success that's what success looks like we snug that in I still have to drill my hole but so you see um, I gotta push that back just a bit Ooh. And then I gotta drill the hole because when this pops through. Um, Alright, I had success a few seconds ago. What happened to success? What happened to success? I gotta make sure I move this the right way. Okay, it goes that way. Fart, fart, fart. Saying, let me set this up and come back. Hey, right, for now I clamped the part down. So I could show you how this works. Let me just see if I can get a little bit better lighting here. So I put the key in like this. And the part is just clamped in there because I still have to drill a hole in it. And if I turn this like so, you see how the, it ticks and then it can't come back the other way. So it goes tick, 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 tick. The mainspring is inside is broken, but... If I hold that, 
and I let go see it's grabbing it right there so it's grabbing the ratchet that's the part right there fits absolutely perfect if I let the uh, friggin barrel go it just goes anyway so that's it so I made this part let me just unscrew that Let's see which way do I use to unscrew it like that so that's the part there and that's sitting in position right now and I have to make sure that I gotta make sure I got a little bit more room right here so I don't have any risk of it touching the gear but it's pretty close so I just have to file a bit away then I just need to drill my hole here and then screw that part in and I have fixed fixed the whatever you want to call that click spring perfect distance here um, let me just get my little pad out so I can show you something uh, what I did was I made the part so that it uh, from the top the ratchets like that the angles of those wheels are kind of like this they're kind of angled like that and then so when I made the the part goes like this and then there's that V opening uh, actually goes like this and then like that anyway I made the part like this and then I made the angle here that's a shitty diagram folks I made the angle like this and then it goes like this and I made sure the angle here was like this on the end so that there was the least amount of friction when this angle comes through like this so this angle here from the from the ratchet comes through and this thing just pops up in this direction like so and then when it if this tries to come back it catches this is actually like that it catches in here and it prevents the wheel from coming back so that's the part um, I would say this is successful um, now I can go ahead and and fix the mainspring which I don't need to make a video on that but that my friends is how you make a part so I still have to drill the hole in there but that's no big deal screw that in the hardest part was to fashion the thing and make it look a lot like the old one and use the old one as a as an example this is the old one here and that's the new one and I think I did a pretty good job so the uh, it works so that's the important part it works just hold that with my finger and then turn that I'm gonna do that look at that doopy doo doopy doo it just pops right back up anyway that's it so thanks for watching I saw an hour and 17 minutes but hopefully it's a entertaining and what I want to say is that um, when you have a watch you have a broken part in a watch um, you can I think the trick of using those uh, feeler gauges is excellent because you can actually met, uh, determine the size of the metal you need and then file it out I used a Dremel tool to do the cut I think that works really well with a vise um, and then I just fine-tune the part as I got closer to the end um, I just I still have to drill the hole but that's no big deal drilling the hole done millions of holes before and I'll screw that in and I'll have a perfectly good part and I think that the uh, this type of metal for the uh, it's not brittle so it actually pounded nicely and was able to move it into place Then I sized that properly and I made an angle on the very tip of it so it's it rides on that gear nicely so there you go I hope you enjoyed it I'll publish this and I'll talk to you later see you later thanks for watching um, please uh, subscribe to my videos uh, thanks a lot